Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to CCTV's 40th anniversary. Yay! <laughs> My name is Elaine Haney. I'm the chair of the board of directors for CCTV, and I am so proud that um, our, our wide family of friends and people who have worked with us for so many years are here tonight to celebrate this big occasion. So I welcome you to our party, and I just want to do a few um, pieces of gratitude and welcoming a few dignitaries, as it were, and then we'll let our festivities begin. So um, thank you to all of the people who help contribute financially to make CCTV possible. In particular, um, Pat Robbins and Lisa Schamberg, Patricia Fontaine, Lisa Steele, Tiff Blumley and Liz Shane, and Carl and Judy Fahrenbach. Thank you, everyone. We have contributors from all stripes, people who give monthly, people who give one time. We thank you so much for your support. We also have some wonderful underwriters and partners for this event tonight to make our party possible. Education and enrichment for everyone, Main Street Landing, and Momo's Market. Thank you for the support of this wonderful shindig at this wonderful location. And also, I just would like to welcome some wonderful supporters here who sometimes they're on the other side of the camera and we're covering them. Mayor Mulvaney Stanek is here. <laughs> City Councilor Jean Bergman is here. <laughs> uh, former Mayor Peter Clavell is here. Lost track of Peter. And um, I, think, I think those are all the dignitaries that I see. Andy Watts from the Town of Essex Select Board. Welcome, Andy. There's a lot of local government folks around who we are, we are covered by you. I'm a city councilor in Essex Junction. We would not get our work done without CCTV and Town Meeting Television. Also, thank you to our board members, some of whom are here tonight. Mary Simon, Shay Totten, uh, former board members Jane Nodell and Megan, uh, Aaron Malone and any other board members are here in the audience tonight. Please raise your hand so we can thank you. New board members, uh, Helen Rock is here. Thank you everyone for your work. It, take, it takes a village, it takes a big volunteer effort to keep CCTV going. But most importantly, I really want to extend, and this is probably going to happen a bunch of times tonight. I really want all of us to thank the staff of CT CCTV. Yeah. I've been involved with CCTV for many years, and I think the staff now is the best staff we have ever had, and we have had some pretty phenomenal staff members over the years. So I really want to thank um, Lauren Glenn, Muhammad, Megan, Bobby, Aaron, everybody who's here making this event possible today, and all of the former staff who are joining us to celebrate, our field producers, and those of you in the audience who have put on programming through CCTV, some hosts of programs, election night coverage. It is a huge uh, organization that does an enormous amount of work for Chittenden County and for Vermont, so I really want to thank all of you for the collective effort it takes to make CCTV the special organization it is and to do the important work of opening the doors of democracy for all of us and for everyone. So thank you so much for coming today, and I want to introduce our co-director, Megan O'Rourke. Hi, Mohammed. So uh, we, when Lauren Glenn needed to step down, um, we said we can't fill the shoes with just one of us. We need two of us. So Mohammed and I are uh, co-directors of CCTV, and thank you all for being here so much. Appreciate it. So this is a little emotional for me, and I need to read some comments. And um, so first, I want to talk to the CCTV founders specifically Nat and Lauren Glenn, and I know there are many other founders or folks who were part of the beginning of this. Um, 
And so while Nat isn't here in the physical form, he is certainly here in every archived tape that we digitize. He is here every time somebody gets excited about the old stuff. And he is very alive to me. And thank you, Linda, also for being here to bring him into the room. Um, Nat and LG, t LG, your creativity and tenacity um, gave us an amazing foundation um, to build on. Um, what a lot of gumption you had to parlay the idea of putting a tape on TV into the institution that CCTV is today. Um, yeah. From your epic spreadsheets um, to Nat's meticulous metadata, your combined attention to the details with care and graciousness have set a very high bar. Um, your care and attention isn't just for the programs produced and archived, or the projects begun and supported, or the money raised to offset declining revenue, or uh, the, the care and graciousness has been cultivated over the years to shine out on those you work with. Um, I've been blessed by it, personally, and everyone else who has walked in the door. Nat was always curious about everything and everyone he ever met. I think he is the person who said, the free speech, why do we have free speech? It's so we can prevent war from happening. And um, you have always greeted everyone who walks in the door warmly and trying to figure out something about them that makes them tick. And I think we all have learned a lot from you. Numerous staff and interns have come and walk away know knowing more and feeling seen. Um, thank you isn't enough for 40 years, so we're throwing this party and we're going to keep it going for another 40 years, right? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to turn my attention to the staff, the current staff here and volunteers. And if folks could just raise your hand, please, if you are currently working if you can. I know it's hard, but just let us see you, because you're amazing. Um, this, is a, this is a big time, um, a big transition internally and with a lot of social upheaval in our democracy. Community media is needed now more than ever. And despite the proliferation of video sharing sites, um, uh, anti-social media often drowns us in um, over prolific content and doesn't connect us unless we really work hard to make it uh, work for us. Um, creating a space for people to come together and express themselves is a hallmark of this crew and that is not a one-size-fits-all event. Responding to community requests for coverage, one-on-one -on -one conversations with community producers, interns and volunteers to uncover how they can use media making to grow and learn, opening the doors to greater understanding of how our local democracy functions. And with the addition of language justice, we get that much closer to the dream team of community media. We are grappling with the promises and impacts of AI, potentially creating new paths for accessibility and new challenges um, eroding our trust and um, for learning media literacy. Um, and we are working on the lines between free speech and harmful content or hurtful content as an organization. So we need to keep these doors open to serve the community, locally produce content, to host tour groups from around the world who want to talk about accountability and free speech, to host groups of students who can play together, making media in a place free of likes, where young people of today can get woken up by the archival footage of four decades ago, and where new media and tech projects may come to incubate and grow. So I'm so excited that all of you are here. I'm so excited by this crew of staff who want to help take this organization into the future. And um, I'm hoping that we're going to have a lightning round to hear from some of you as well in the audience, because that is really what makes CCTV CCTV. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you. And don't run, because we're going to take a picture right after all this talking is over. We're going to go right out there, and we're all going to be really good citizens, and we're going to line up for a picture. We're going to take it really quick, because I know some of you need to get to the MPA. Okay? <laughs> oh, Lauren Glenn, of course. You're speaking. So some of you have heard this story before, but it bears repeating. <clears throat> In 1991, when the UVM students took over the president's office, you might remember that, um, Nat was there. 
<clears throat> it was on a Sunday, and Nat not only was shooting what was happening on the outside, but he had a relationship with the students who provided the film video of what was happening inside. And once the event happened, he went and he edited it, and he put it on the air by early afternoon. <clears throat> and by Monday morning, when the Burlington Free Press had finally reported on it, it had run several times on Channel 17, and people all across the community had seen this. And as we came into the office that morning, <clears throat> we found many of the students were in the hallway waiting. I'm not sure why. Maybe to see the footage. <clears throat> it's not really important. Except Megan was in that hallway. And Nat turned to me and he said, don't they know? They could take over this TV channel. <laughs> and here she is. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for taking up the mantle, Megan, and the entire remarkable staff of people who are bringing this organization in the future. I just have a few words, and that is to say, <clears throat> we're in a barn, and one of the great things about a barn is a barn raising. And in effect, everyone in this room has participated in the community raising of Burlington and the surrounding areas and Vermont for the past 40 years. There is not one person in this room who is not a barn raiser or a community builder. And as John Grierson, who was a great documentary producer, said, when good ideas and good thoughts get together and move like wildfire across the democratic sky, then we are halfway toward building a community worth living in. <clears throat> and it has always been important for us to create a space where people can talk about ideas, where people can work through ways of helping each other and creating opportunity, and people can disagree. We love disagreement, because out of disagreement comes new and different ideas. And that is more important today than it's ever been. And I'd just like to draw your attention to the timeline of CCTV along the back wall. <clears throat> you may have an opportunity to look at it. But it traces the steps that we followed to create a robust and sustainable community media center in this region, but in, across the entire state. There are 24 community media centers. And thanks to the work of these 24 community media centers and our colleague, Amy Schoenberger and her team at Action Circles and Senator Baruth and Senator Kitchell and other legislators, we were able to secure a million dollars in the base budget to help offset the decline of cable revenue that is being experienced across the state. <laughs> and if I had the... Um, Confidence, I would m drop the mic and walk off. <laughs> because really, that to me is the culmination of all of this work, is to provide a secure foundation so that we can continue to build community through the exchange, the fearless exchange of ideas between people who agree and don't agree with each other so that we can create more opportunity for the people that can benefit from it and we can create a place where people have all the things we want them to have, food, housing, jobs, dignity, all of that starts in the exchange of the ideas, and that's what we do here. So thank you very much, and thank you for supporting this remarkable staff, and thanks to each of you for the role that you have played. Because honestly, sometimes I get a lot of the credit, but that's because my head has been over the foxhole. <clears throat> but None of this would happen without every single person here. And many of the people who are not, who are up in the honor roll on the wall, including Nat. 
and so many others. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lauren Glenn. <laughs> Tough act to follow. Um. <laughs> so my, my name is Bobby Lucier. I am very lucky to be the development director at CCTV right now. Um, and we're about to start this little lightning round for a few minutes to hear from folks, from all of you who've come and, and made CCTV what it is today. Uh, brief story that I'll share. I moved to Vermont about five years ago to, uh, for a job working for Gay Symington. And when uh, Gay knew that I had a passion for local media and community media, and so when I asked Gay, who do I ought to know in Burlington, the first name that Gay said was Lauren Glendavidian. And little did Gay know, Lauren Glenn would hire me three years later to uh, work at CCTV. And it is such a privilege to work at this organization and a tremendous, tremendous privilege to work for an organization that has a legacy, an ongoing legacy, of being powered by tenacious and inspiring and thoughtful women. And I'm so grateful for, and it is precisely for that reason that this organization is in such a strong position today. So thank you, Lauren Glenn. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Jordan Mitchell, where you are. Thank you, Allison Seeger. Thank you to Elaine Haney. And thank you to Emily Brewer for all that you all do to make CCTV what it is. Okay. And speaking of strong and powerful women, uh, the mayor of Burlington is here. <laughs> and I think we'll start with her, Mayor Mulvaney Stanek. Can we ask you to say a couple of words? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'll try to, and there's two cameras and a beam, so hopefully you can see me. <laughs> um, well, I am happy to start the popcorn because we're going to move this around in true CCTV style. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mayor Emma Mulvaney Stanek, and it's such a delight to be here. CCTV has been such a huge part of my public service experience, starting first a thousand years ago when I was on city council. Um, and I'm just so pleased to be able to be here. It takes a lot of work and tenacity to operate any nonprofit, but especially in the times through which media and local media is trying to survive, frankly. And it's great to not only see survival, but thriving happening here for CCTV. So. Good evening, now to my official remarks. Um, so good evening, I am grateful to be here with all of you here to celebrate the 40th anniversary of CCTV. CCTV is a key piece of the fabric of Burlington and we are lucky to have a community media organization that has for decades been dedicated to making our local government more accessible. The gavel to gavel coverage of municipal meetings has been an important mechanism for people to engage with government throughout the years. And that was especially apparent when we faced a global pandemic in 2020. CCTV was able to work collaboratively with the city of Burlington to determine what access to government meetings would look like with everyone tuning in from home. Do you remember those days? What dark, dark days they were. And when we were able to gather in physical spaces again, CCTV helped the city create a hybrid meeting format that still allows people to participate from home. And I see that every night when I am at a city council meeting and that level of access is so critically important, especially for working people, for people with small children, those small people have to go to bed. I mean, it just is an amazing, it's one of the only small gifts out of the pandemic and I so appreciate that. I appreciated that as a legislator, but even more so in local government because we know that local government impacts people's day-to-day -day lives so much more. Um, and, uh, and I continue to be grateful for the production staff who endure those, speaking of those Monday nights, Monday night evening council meetings, sticking through it even when those late nights become Tuesday mornings, which happened the entire year I was first year on the city council. We ended at like 2 a.m., I'm not even lying, every single meeting. Do not recommend. A common thread over the last 40 years of change and growth for Burlington has been, has been the presence and profound contributions of CCTV. And that has not just supported residents' access to information, but now serves as an expansive archive, you can see it behind these cameras, of the digital media, maintaining a vibrant and vital connection to so many special Burlington stories. And today, this work continues in communities outside of Burlington, of course. At a time when we find ourselves in, challenging, in a challenging traditional and social media landscape, CCTV's role is, is more crucial than ever. 
As Mayor of Burlington, I look forward to continuing to work collaboratively with all of you to find innovative ways to engage our community and make our local government even more accessible. But as I wrap up here, I just want to extend a heartful, a heartful gratitude to those who have made CCTV what it is today and to all of you who are keeping the passion for community media alive so well. Thank you so much for having me here tonight, and let's party and celebrate an amazing organization. Thank you. And before we pass on, yes, well, Allison is in the queue. Um, I also want to just recognize and thank Jane Kramer for sharing her birthday with CCTV for all these years. And I think Lauren Glenn has a gift for you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Emily. Thank you all for being here, and thank you so much, Mayor Mulvaney Stanek. We are so lucky to have your support, not only now as mayor, but before when you were a state representative, we could always rely on you. When we went to the state house to, to um, interview for Under the Dome, and um, we, you know, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Emily Brewer. I am um, CCTV's, my title has changed many times since my journey started here. Um, I am <laughs> CCTV. Yes, I'm the marketing and outreach coordinator here. Um, and, you know, I started my journey um, with CCTV as an intern in 2021 and had no idea where that was going to take me. And I'm just, I'm so incredibly thankful for um, my predecessor, Barry Silver, um, for just, you know, being able to work under her and giving me the opportunity to stay in this wonderful organization. And, you know, I won't go on for too much longer, but for me, like, when I moved to Vermont, I, you know, I went to college at Champlain, studied communication. Um, I, you know, it, it takes a while when you move to a new place to form relationships, and I, CCTV has absolutely 100% become a family to me, and I am just so incredibly grateful, honored, and privileged to work with all of my colleagues and all of the community members that come through the door every day. So next time you come in the studio, my desk is right by the front door. Please feel free to say hi, and I'll say hi back to you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, keeping this lightning round going, love to hear a couple of words from former mayor Peter Clavel, um, who is right over here. Thank you, Peter. You, ne you never ask a former mayor who gets the mic on a rare occasion to say just a few words. <laughs> But I'll be brief. I want to say happy birthday to CCTV. Yes. And, and CCTV, you are old. But I am older. It's hard to believe, but uh, with the year that CCTV was launched, I was the 35-year-old director of the Community and Economic Development Office. I went on to serve as mayor for seven terms. And for every year over those decades, I've been riding with CCTV. And it's been quite a ride. And I must say that ride included attendance, by my account, my attendance at 500 city council meetings. Imagine that, Emma. I think the only one that has been to more city council meetings than me has been Nat Air. Nat, God bless you. But I, I just want to close by saying, yes, it's been a remarkable ride, but I want to state the obvious, that democracy is being threatened, is being challenged, is, it, and, the, and the only response can be to the threats that we're facing in democracy, whether it's in this country or whether it's worldwide when we're seeing a massive shift towards authoritarian right-wing governments, the only response can be an informed and engaged citizenry. And so that's what CCTV has done for the past 40 years. That's what CCTV needs to continue to do. And it's not only looking forward, but it's also looking backward. And that's a remarkably important what you've done with the archive project so we can reflect and remember what was done in the past the mistakes that we've made, and the mistakes that we can hopefully avoid. So don't take it for granted. Democracy in Burlington and in this region is alive and well. 
but it might not always be that way. And the only way that we're going to assure the future of democracy is by being engaged, being informed, and having CCTV as part of the civic infrastructure of this community. So happy birthday, and may you have 100 more. Thank you, Peter. Up next, we'll hear from Allison Seeger, who's the director of the Vermont Language Justice Project. Thanks, Allison. Hi, uh, my name is Alison Seeger. I'm the director and founder of the Vermont Language Justice Project. And I didn't know what I was going to say when I was asked to speak, and this could have gone a hundred ways. I could talk for hours about what I do, but then Megan used the word foundation in her opening words, and I realized that a solid foundation was created by CCTV in November 2021 when the Vermont Language Justice Project was looking for a home and CCTV took us in. Two and a half years later, the project has grown exponentially. We've had over a quarter of a million views on our YouTube channel and have over 1,700 subscribers. To my knowledge, we are the only project doing the work of providing video information to folks in up to 19 languages in the country. And in fact, in the world, we're the only project that I know of in the world doing this work. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> uh, information about health and mental health and many things, how to open a bank account, how to save someone's life when, by using Narcan, um, how to plunge a toilet, um, what ticks are, anything that people need to know in order to educate themselves, get information and make choices about how they live their lives. Um, Lily is here, one of our translators. She treat, uh she um, translates into Mandarin, and she has this amazing system, and it's something that we do, which is such a grassroots way of doing things. She has a WeChat list of over 100 uh, people um, who speak Mandarin um, throughout Vermont, and every time we make a video, we send it back to Lily in Mandarin, and she sends it out to over 100 people who speak Mandarin in some of the most kind of rural parts of Vermont. You know, if you go to Vermont, to uh, a small town, and there's, um, and there's a Chinese restaurant. Those people are incredibly isolated. Lily knows all these folks and sends every video that we do to, um, to all the people speaking Mandarin that she knows in the state. So we are really grateful to CCTV for giving us this foundation to do our work. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you so much, Allison. Next, we'll hear a few words from um, Michael Billingsley, who was involved in the early days of CCTV. I'd like to come out here, so hi. I'm uh, looking back 40 years now, maybe even 50. I'd like to introduce you to port portable television, okay? So this is part of the, part of the package. This is a 22-pound video recorder from the era from 1970 to 1980 that was used in the early years of television production when everybody thought the only way to get television was to go to a TV studio. And one of the most important things about the introduction of portable television and home television was that people could go out on the street, in my case I started in Cambridge probably in 1970, but in every community and every Household in every business place and every uh, church and every recreation area, people could take television and show what the lives of the people were like. So in addition to its political impact in terms of always offering a platform for a dissenting voice, the other thing that television accomplished, and certainly I remember bringing tapes to Burlington to hand off to Nat and to um, Lauren, and they in turn passing tapes back up to us and going through the whole process of actually making public access television legal in Vermont, which Lauren and I, Lauren Glenn and I worked very hard to accomplish with a lot of hours at the Public Service Board in court. And when that change took place, many people who had been producing TV already, but the only way that they could show it was in something called CCTV, ironically, 
but that was closed circuit television, meaning that you made a tape and then you showed it on a screen and you got as many people to come and look at that as you could. And that was one way to bring the message that ordinary people's lives, regular people, people of different color, people of different language, people of different eth- ethnic backgrounds, had important stories to tell, quite different than the mainstream television that was shown on broadcast TV and usually was a lot of happy beaming white people. So what we, I think we accomplished in uh, a relatively long period of time, over 20 years, is to shift the public perception to believe that ordinary people were extremely important and regular people's views were extremely important and Lauren Glenn and all the others at CCTV did a wonderful job of promulgating that, taking it out, making it real and bringing it to the people. So thank you and happy birthday. And anybody wants to come over and pick this up, you're welcome to do that. And next we'll just hear a couple of words from CCTV's broadcast IT engineer, Drew Darrow. Hi. Hey, everybody. So my name is Drew Darrow, and I do the broadcast engineering at CCTV, which is making sure that when your hybrid meetings are happening, that everyone can see and hear and access the meetings you know, either through technology, on YouTube, or on the TV, and then, you know, as soon as I'm done talking, I'm going to figure out why that TV is frozen. So that's, <laughs> that's part of what I do. Um, and working at CT- CCTV has been really great for me personally. Working a full-time job is really hard. I drive from Middlebury every day to come up here and work, and it's hard to work a full-time job, but it's even harder when you have to put a mask on and pretend. And I don't have to do that at CCTV. I can come as I am, be myself, and that is such a rewarding and wonderful experience to just be. And so I really encourage anyone else to just come in and make TV with us because you can just come in and be yourself. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to think you know anything about TV. You don't, you, just whatever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, you know, I felt safe coming in to make TV and, and work full time there, and I want everyone else to feel like that. So. Thank you very much. Thanks, Drew. We'll open it up. We have time for one or two more uh, folks to speak before the big group picture. Um, If anyone wants to... And the cake. Look at this delicious cake. Do we have a hand? Yes. We have a taker. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, good afternoon. Does this, or do you guys want me to stand anywhere in particular? Thanks, Kevin. Uh, good to see you. Um, it's funny. I actually worked for Gang Symington too, and it was after that experience. Some of you might remember the 2008 governor's race, where you had a three, you know, you had three candidates, and that experience really pushed me towards CCTV and working for Lauren Glenn because I thought, wow, this place is dedicated to an expansion of voice for people who don't have voice, and uh, being a venue for a range of different ideas, regardless of how much money or political clout you brought into the equation. And so, you know, I think a few folks have talked a little bit about uh, changing media, and so, you know, who would have thought that ChatGPT would be dominating a lot of our lives, that social media would be taking the place of network television, But I think a common thread that I've always found present in this community is the individuals. And I was here in 2009 to 11 and helped launch Common Good Vermont with Kathleen Swanson. Hello, Kathleen and Lauren Glenn. I did uh, many hours behind the camera learning from people like Kevin Harms. Hello, Kevin, back there. (laughs) Um, And it was the individuals that CCTV, Center for Media and Democracy, really resonated with me. To acknowledge a couple folks who aren't with us anymore, uh, Sarah Berger, who was the finance director and was a good friend to many, uh, to Richard Kemp. Uh, there are not a lot of black people in Burlington, and so to see an empowered black individual with voice who is bringing others into the fold was always uh, very much appreciated. Um, and just a word about free speech. Uh, I think right now that concept is being tarnished and uh, manipulated in ways that I really don't actually think represent free speech. Free speech to me, and I think for many of us here, is empowering those who don't have a voice. It's about having economies where there's local control and there isn't manipulation 
by an increasingly small number of actors, which is exactly where most of our media is going. So for the power of individuals to make media and to distribute that media through various channels, I think, is only going to become more important. So I wrote a card to Lauren Glenn, but it wasn't a congratulations card because I don't think she's actually really going anywhere in terms of any sort of retirement because this is her life. And it's not a job for it's a way of being. And that way is bringing ideas and people together uh, and empowering individuals to really become themselves. In my entire career, uh, Lauren Glenn's uh, touch has been very prevalent throughout of it. So uh, a word of thanks to her. Um, and so I guess... Uh, okay, finally, finally I'm going to uh, close with a quote from John Dewey. Uh, many of you might know John Dewey. He's you know, a famous political theorist, uh, grew up in Burlington. To find out what one is fitted to do and to secure an opportunity to do it is the key to happiness. And I want to thank Lauren Glenn and the community at CCTV for enabling me to figure out what gave me happiness in what I do. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, we have time for one more speaker, and it will be uh, community producer Ed Baker. Ed, thanks so much. And then, so just to let everyone know what's going to happen, we're going to head out here in front of the barn for one of those big pictures that we see on the wall over there with all those people. We're going to make one out here. Ed. <laughs> yes, we do. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased to be here with everyone today, with our guest speakers. What an honor. You know, um, it's interesting. This is the 40th anniversary for CCTV. It's my 40th anniversary in recovery from drug addiction. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I was, I was discovered by Margaret Harrington, who is another host producer at CCTV. I had spoken up at um, a community forum on addiction. We had San Quinones a noted author come and I spoke up and Margaret noticed me and she said hey Ed you want to be on my show so I said okay and I went on her show and we talked about opioids we talked about overdose we talked about death and she said to me at the end of the show off camera do you do you think you might want your own show go figure I had that thought had never ever once in my wildest imagination crossed my mind. And I, I, I said, let me sleep on it. <clears throat> and um, went home and thought, gee, I don't, I don't really think I can interview people on TV. And then I realized that I was a psychotherapist for 30 years and I could interview people. We began the Addiction Recovery Channel and um, it has had a seven year uh, life it's been very popular. It's been shared in the Northeast and, and beyond. And um, it's an advocacy show. It was devoted uh, to reduce stigma, devoted to bring incredibly vital information to Vermonters who are thirsty and hungry for accurate information, information that, that goes beyond stigma to compassion. Compassion is in the heart of the beholder. I like to say our goal was to unlearn stigma and unleash compassion. And, and I'm not going to go too long. I'll, I'll wrap up now. But what I, wanna, what I really want to tell you is that this idea resonated with each and every good soul at CCTV. And I felt that coming from them. And that is what has invigorated me over the last seven years. And um, as you know, it's not easy. We face grief every day. We don't know what to do. But, 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 but I found the energy to, to keep up the good fight. And um, I want to thank CCTV. I want to thank uh, Lauren, Glenn, Kevin, you know, the, the many people who work here uh, for, 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 for thinking people with addiction are important and wanting to educate people in Vermont 
about the truth about addiction, that people get better when they have the right services, the right support, at the right time, offered to them in the right way. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. I have um, one PS before the picture, because, of course, the idea of the picture originated with Dan Higgins. Yes. And um, 40 years ago tonight, we were just up the river at the Video Cafe, which is Dan Higgins' studio. And Joy Hopkins, I think, might have been there. And Rain Kramer was there. And Rain's father, Robert Kramer, was there. And Murray Bookchin was there. And John Douglas was there. And Terry Dinan and Marty Illick were there. And Calvin Collins were there. And many other people were there. <clears throat> and I can't overstate the importance of Dan in the work that I have done and the work that CCTV has done, his anthropological imagination, his insistence on making pictures and not taking pictures, and his deep commitment to conversation has been at the absolute DNA of what we've done here. And so this group picture is not just the group picture of the 40th, it's a kind of homage to Dan, and it's also a great record of the work that we've done collectively. So thank you, Dan, so much. Yes, standing, a standing ovation for Dan. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. So uh, we're going to come out to this side of the barn, and if you'll follow me, and we'll line up out here. <laughs> 